Alrighty guys, finally gonna have video grinding feet here. Now it's got a new scale head, had I bought a used scale head off of Craigslist and it come with three extra weigh bars. Um, but they weren't the right calibration so I couldn't run them with these weigh bars. Uh, which I'll get to that at the end of the video, but I did have to buy the hitch weigh bar because mine was not the original one wasn't working, so bought that in a scale head. But it works really nice now. Well, we're gonna grind some feed. This probably can do a lot more than what I've done with it here at first, but zeroed out, well, close enough, two pounds, whatever. What I've got, I had a, a nutritionist make me up a ration plan, and it was a, a 47 megacal, as I believe it, as I believe what they call that. Um, I was talking to Ted, and he thought I, for a grow ration, I probably ought to be up around 50, and so I bought this computer program. Uh, it's from Iowa State University. Uh, I think it's called like Iowa Beef Center or something. It's for making ration plans. It was like 50 bucks, so that wasn't bad. Um, and I can go in there and plug all my, you know, I had my hay tested, I had my corn tested, I had my gluten tested. Um, so I can plug all those numbers in and then I play with, you know, the amount they're getting fed each day until I get a ration I want. And then I can mix it up in here. And that's what I've done. And I took what my nutritionist gave me and then I adjusted the numbers a little bit to uh, uh, get it up to 50 megacal. About 12.5% protein. Got five things I'm gonna put in here. I got the balancer, which is like some minerals, and it's got something called remensin in it that I think I said that right, that uh, uh, helps it float and whatnot and helps them to digest the feed a little better. Now I put a 50 pound bag of that in, uh, and I'm going to make a one ton ration here. Uh, the 2,000 pounds, then I put corn, and then my gluten, and then I put my second cutting, then my first cutting. Always put the little ingredients in first. I probably add the gluten, but since I'm going to add the hay last, it takes a while to grind the hay, and so not a big deal. But um, uh, we'll get grinding the feed here. Come back and get it here later. I'm running the three-quarter screen for the uh, corn. I'm going to run it up here, no load. Probably run it up about 1650 or so on the RPM. Get a load on it, it'll pull it down a little under 1500. and make sure we're still recording. And I need uh, 1,070 pounds of corn. I apologize to get dust on the lens of the camera and it gets dirty.
Well, I'll come back to you when I get... Well, if I shut it off, shut the gate off about 50 pounds ahead of when I... Like I need 1070, I'll shut the wagon off about 1020 and that'll about give me the amount I want then. Well, I got about a bushel over. Didn't quite get it shut off in time, but that's alright. Not the end of the world. Got to be more accurate than I was being when I was just guessing in there. Well, I'm going to take this thing out. Well, I'll go around and get the gluten. All right, I need 135 pounds of this uh, corn gluten. Um, later in the year when I'm using a lot more of it with my finish ration, I think where I'm using like 500 some pounds a ton, or a, yeah, a ton. I'll uh, you know run, pull the wagon out and run the mill to it. But right now we're only need 135. And you can see it's a pelletized thing. Kind of cakes up a little bit, but that's all right. Got two tons in here, it just kind of sticks together. Stuff I had it tested, it was 23% uh, dry material or 23% protein on the dry material, so it comes out a little, a little over 20% as fed, 20% protein. This ration that I'm making up, it's a 87. 87% dry material, so it's a pretty dry ration, but I don't really have any way to store wet feed. And I don't want to mix something up every day for eight cows. With 44 pounds. Alrighty, getting ready to grind hay here. I sound a little different because I wear a mask. I get allergies real bad. You know, if that's not going to work, that's going to fog the glasses up. Well, stand up. Run the wind. All right, well, anyway, we're going to take this three quarter screen out of here and replace it with this one. A 3 8 screen, but I had no use for that because I can grind it plenty fine at that three quarter if I want. Um, I went in here and punched a bunch of inch and a half holes in it just to leave the stems a little longer. And I've already made up the one bash or bleh, ration in the wagon, and it worked good. But I went back and punched some more holes in it. All right, that's in there. Got my second cutting cut open here. I'll throw the second cut in. Come back to you here when I get the uh, first cut going. All right, I got my first cut, which I forgot to zero it before the second cut. Or I got my second cut in. I forgot to zero it before the first cut. So got to uh, go up to 716 pounds. I think is what I'm going to. They go through kind of hard. It's worse on the first cut because it's got grass in it. So I found it works 
kind of helps you just take your foot and just kind of smash the flakes and kind of loosen them up just a little bit. Just kind of just really makes it easier on the mill to go through it. And just do something like that. It doesn't take much, it just needs a little help. And that door flops down and it makes it a little easier. It doesn't suck it through quite as fast and it gives you a little bigger opening to uh, shove the hay in. Later in the summer, I got that corn stalk round bale sitting there. I'm wanting to use that, use corn stalks on my uh, finish ratching just for roughage. And so I gotta come up with some way a little better and I've got a couple ideas to feed in, which will work for the bales too once I get it set up. They make a feed roll attachment for this, and they made one. It'd be kind of handy, but it still doesn't help out. I'd like to feed the corn stalk bale in with the skid steer and a claw bucket. what I need to do to save all the fines. That's kind of a nice thing about my ration, that computer program I bought. Hey, you can figure in your waste and it calculates it all into what your, you know, your cost per, cost per ton is and you know how much you need to be feeding and everything. Before I turned the knives, when I first started grinding, I threw a big old chunk in, not knowing what was going to happen. It just about, about killed the tractor, but it came out of it. day here it started to rain right as I was throwing the last bale in yesterday so I had to put everything away didn't get a chance to get it unloaded <clears throat> still got uh, some feed in here I'm gonna mix some up at the beginning of the week <clears throat> that was out I zeroed the scale out and so I'll see how much I got on here. Need to patch the end of the auger there, it's rusty through. But I'll come back to you here and get it empty out and show you the sample. Alrighty guys, got it all unloaded here. 
that's what it looks like I'm pretty happy with this I'm really happy with it you see it's got some more coarseness to it here not to give them enough roughage to digest it better you know there's some longer stems and stuff but yeah that's what it looks like I did uh, a little word to the wise if someone decides they want to do some crazy ideas like I got doing this um, I would probably not let the stuff sit in there overnight I did and uh, it kind of it had a little trouble at first starting to unload out of the mixer um, if I ground it finer I don't think it probably would have been as much of a problem uh, but as long as you know it's still mixing in the mixer I wouldn't shut it off for very long I'd try to unload it right after you mix it because uh, it had settled you know probably 15 percent or so in the mixer and it just packed together enough I had to get in there with a stick and kind of poke around on it a little bit to get it to break free and unload then and then it cleaned out fine so which I've never had a trouble with that thing cleaning out in the three loads I've mixed so but I think finally got it here third try is a charm and I'm pretty happy with it this is about four or uh, two tons in the wagon here I don't know if sometime might try squeezing three on top of here or something since I am you know while I'm mixing up I don't know if I get three stacked up if I move the auger around or not but anyway got one more thing to show you here all right last thing here if anybody is interested I bought that uh, scale head that Avery Waytronics um, is the brand also came with these three way bars come out of a uh, Artsway 425A is what the guy said um, any Avery Waytronic scale or, or scale head that's got a 5 pin connector will work with these um, I've tested them they do work um, I think he said he bought them in 2014 I believe bought the whole system and then he got rid of his pigs and so he didn't need them anymore if you want to just, you know, when I bought my other way bar for the hitch on that gale, I asked the guy, he said these things are $300 a piece and $900 for the set is what they'd cost new. I'd probably sell them for $450 or best offer. They're 2 and an eighth is the calibration diameter. Um, so they'll work with, uh, or that's what you, you know, you got to plug into your scale head to calibrate them. It's 2 and an eighth is the uh I believe it's 05 is the code. Um, so yeah, they tested. I'd sell them for 450 or best offer. If anybody who's watching is interested, just comment or uh, if you can figure out how to send me a private message on YouTube, uh, you can do that. But let me know you sent one in the comments because I uh, forget to check that quite a bit. So um, just leave me a comment and I'll try to figure out a way to get a hold of you if. Uh, you know, if you are interested in them, just throwing that out there for anybody. So, 450 your best offer, two and an eighth is the calibration. Uh, come out of an Artsway 425. So, that'll do it here for grind and feed, and uh, thanks for watching.